series of industrial safety training programs. Today's program is on hydrogen sulfide safety. You know, hydrogen sulfide is one of the most toxic gases known to man. A single breath at high concentrations can kill a person, and even short exposures at low or moderate concentrations can be lethal. Because it's so toxic, anyone who works with or around hydrogen sulfide needs to be familiar with the characteristics of this gas. And that's where this program comes in. We'll be explaining what hydrogen sulfide is and why it's so toxic. We'll also be showing you some specific operations and processes where you're likely to find this gas. We'll look at how you can detect the presence of hydrogen sulfide and what kind of respiratory protection equipment you should wear if you're exposed. Finally, we'll cover the emergency procedures to follow in case of a hydrogen sulfide release or injury. Well, the video is starting now, so let's watch the program. I'll be back later to summarize the main points. Those who fail to learn the lessons of history are doomed to repeat the same mistakes. A death or injury from hydrogen sulfide gas is totally unnecessary. All that is required to protect yourself is a knowledge of the characteristics of H2S and the effects it can have on you physically in various concentrations. The next step is to learn places where H2S may be present in your workplace and how to detect it. How to disperse H2S in a given area is also important should you find it to be at unsafe levels. In the event of an emergency and for certain work situations, protective equipment must be used. The most important characteristic of H2S is that it can kill you. It is highly toxic, more toxic than carbon monoxide, and as deadly as hydrogen cyanide, the gas used for execution in gas chambers. Even when concentrations of H2S are less than 1%, a single breath can be enough to paralyze the respiratory system. Concentrations of H2S are expressed in parts per million, this is one cubic meter, about 39 inches on a side. This is one cubic centimeter, less than a half inch on a side. It takes one million cubic centimeters to fill one cubic meter. If we place 100 cubic centimeters inside the cubic meter, we could refer to it as a concentration of 100 parts per million. With just this much H2S in the air, you would probably experience coughing and eye irritation. In two to 15 minutes, your sense of smell would be numbed. After one hour at this exposure, you would become drowsy. At this level of constant exposure, death would occur in 48 hours. With 500 to 700 parts per million, you would be unconscious and possibly dead within 30 to 60 minutes. At 700 to 1,000 parts per million, you would experience unconsciousness in a matter of moments and would die if not rescued. At 1,000 to 2,000 parts per million, you would become unconscious immediately. Your breathing would be paralyzed and your only hope would be artificial resuscitation. Even if you were moved to fresh air immediately, you would not be able to resume breathing on your own. If breathing is not restored in three minutes, death or serious brain damage will occur. Since hydrogen sulfide is highly toxic, safe exposure limits have been established based on the intensity of the exposure and the length of time over which it takes place. In a refinery, safe exposure limits are best calculated in two different ways, over an eight-hour shift and for a 15-minute period. An average of 10 parts per million is considered safe over an 8-hour shift for a 40-hour work week. 15 parts per million is considered safe if the exposure does not last more than 15 minutes, does not occur more than 4 times daily, 
and occurs in periods at least one hour apart. Beyond any of these limits, fresh air breathing equipment must be used. Although hydrogen sulfide has other dangerous characteristics such as flammability, it is first and foremost a breathing hazard. Clearly then, H2S is toxic. H2S is also a fire hazard. It burns with a blue flame and produces another toxic gas when it burns, sulfur dioxide, or SO2, which is also irritating to the eyes and lungs. So the second characteristic of H2S is that it is flammable. H2S is also soluble. It mixes well with water and hydrocarbon liquids. It can travel anywhere in a refinery that liquid or gas streams do, making it even more hazardous. If the liquids containing H2S are under pressure, the H2S gas may be highly concentrated. A leak in the system may result in hydrogen sulfide exposure. One danger of H2S is that it is soluble. Another identifying feature of H2S is its odor. It smells like rotten eggs, but you must never rely on this to detect the presence of the gas. The rotten eggs odor is detectable at concentrations of less than one part per million, but you probably wouldn't experience any other signs of H2S presence until the concentration reaches 20 parts per million. At levels of about 50 parts per million, your sense of smell would begin to deaden, so concentrations could increase without your detecting a change. One feature of H2S is its odor of rotten eggs and the fact that it deadens the sense of smell. The fifth characteristic of H2S is that it is colorless. You cannot visually detect H2S gas in air. Hydrogen sulfide is colorless. H2S is also heavier than air. It tends to stay low to the ground and settle in ditches and sewers. Because it does not disperse readily from such places, it is even more of a hazard. H2S is heavier than air. Finally, you should know that H2S is corrosive in the presence of moisture. It forms an acid that causes cracks and brittleness in some metals. Remember, H2S is corrosive. Take a moment now to review these seven characteristics of hydrogen sulfide. Now that you are familiar with the characteristics of H2S, it's important to know where H2S is likely to be found in your workplace. Sour or higher sulfur crude is the primary source of H2S, although some sweet crudes can also release lethal amounts of the gas. Virtually any place in a refinery could be an H2S hazardous area, but some require special caution. Storage tanks asphalt shipping areas, pipelines, distillation units, vapor recovery units, sulfur recovery units, catalytic crackers, sour water units, the cat feed hydro treater, and other hydrogen treating units. Any unit which has an amine absorber is an H2S source, for these absorbers recover high concentrations of the gas and pump it from the units to the sulfur recovery unit at high pressure. Leaks in this rich amine liquid system are very hazardous because H2S will be released. H2S can be found in the sewer system, in the fuel gas system, and during emergencies or upsets in the flare system. H2S is most likely to be hazardous in the vapor phase of refining appearing in light distillate streams and light ends processes. Since it is soluble, H2S is also found in water draw-off streams from accumulators and knockout drums. Some areas are equipped with monitors which automatically analyze the atmosphere and signal the presence of H2S at concentrations of between 10 and 20 parts per million. But these can only alert you to some potential problems. In most cases, your judgment and awareness will be the best means to avoid danger. You will want to test for the presence of hydrogen sulfide before beginning hot work or entering a confined space. 
A lead acetate paper test is used in conjunction with a gas test for flammability. Colometric tube detectors, such as the Draeger, are indicators of H2S concentrations. In operating the Draeger detector, a hand pump draws air through a tube containing metallic salts, changing the color. The color of the stain will vary among tube types, but generally, the longer and darker the stain, the higher the H2S concentration. An MSA vapor guard is another monitor device to measure H2S exposure. Specific instructions regarding the various testing methods will be presented in other training. Sometimes these readings will show a need for fresh air breathing equipment, such as the Scott Air Pack. These are placed at process units and operations areas. Each of these has an identification number and must be inspected monthly for parts operations and weekly for emergency readiness. Beyond this, it is the user's responsibility to ensure a proper fit and a sufficient air supply. A pressure demand regulator helps maintain positive pressure in the face piece, preventing toxic fumes from leaking into the mask. Air supply masks used here provide full face coverage to provide breathable air while protecting eyes from irritation. To obtain a proper fit, the user must remove any obstructions like jewelry, glasses, and hair. Beards are not allowed in the refinery for this reason. Although they are called 30-minute air packs, they are designed for planned or emergency exposures of not more than 15 minutes. Because of their weight and time limitation, these packs are not suitable for long-term work projects. To be prepared for any type of emergency, you should be able to put on a Scott air pack in 20 or 30 seconds. To accomplish this, you should practice at least once every two months. For extended periods, hose line air masks should be used. These operate with several face pieces operating off of a joint system with a standby worker monitoring the air supply at the cylinder manifold. There are specific situations all workers should know that always call for these testing and protecting measures. Often, a flammability test will also be required. Some of these situations include when equipment containing H2S is being drained or cleared, where a known H2S leak exists, where rescue is being conducted under suspected H2S conditions, when drawing water from tanks of sour crude, gasoline, kerosene, or other hydrocarbon, when bleeding or sampling streams from process equipment containing sour materials that are not flushed or completely depressured, when breaking, blinding, and repairing sour gas and liquid lines that have not been properly cleared, when working below ground level, when inspecting tank tops in sour stock tanks, when testing for H2S while sampling or gauging sour stocks through roof hatches on tanks, and when changing safety valves on equipment containing sour materials. Now let's continue by discussing H2S emergencies. What do you do if you discover or suspect a high concentration of H2S? First, leave the area immediately. Notify your chief operator or unit supervisor of the situation, giving your exact location and your planned response. He will decide the best way to keep others from entering the area and will notify emergency personnel. Then put on the proper fresh air breathing equipment, making sure you obtain a tight seal. If no one has been injured, take a test to determine the H2S concentration in the area. Find the source of the H2S and close it off if possible. A water fog spray might be useful for dispersal. Use a fan or air mover to disperse the gas if it seems necessary. But what if someone has been injured? Your first three steps should be exactly the same as before. Leave the area, notify the proper person, and put on your fresh air breathing equipment. Your first impulse will be to run to the fallen worker. But for both of you, your best chances for survival depend on your taking these three steps immediately. Only after putting on your fresh air breathing equipment should you attempt a rescue. Remove the worker from the H2S area and begin artificial resuscitation. 
Your phone or radio call will bring medical help soon, but it is critical that you get the victim breathing again. After medical help has arrived and any victims have been removed, you may want to resume other procedures for dispersing the gas. Remember, H2S is a deadly toxic gas that is often present in many areas of the refinery. You must be aware of hydrogen sulfide's toxic nature, where it might be found, how to detect it, and what emergency steps to take when it is present. Learning these lessons and observing the correct procedures will help ensure your safety. Well, when the substance is toxic as hydrogen sulfide, it's pretty easy to see why there isn't a large margin for error. But fortunately, as the video pointed out, you can work safely around hydrogen sulfide. What's required is an awareness of the hazard and the ability to respond quickly in the event of an emergency. Let's review some of the main points. You learned that hydrogen sulfide is primarily a respiratory poison. It interferes with breathing and can be lethal even in small doses. To protect yourself from this hazard, you must wear an air-supplying respirator. You learn that hydrogen sulfide smells like rotten eggs at very low concentrations. But at higher concentrations, it deadens the sense of smell and cannot be detected. You also learn that hydrogen sulfide is very soluble in water and hydrocarbon liquid. Since it's often carried in these fluids, hydrogen sulfide can be released from a leak anywhere in the system. Hydrogen sulfide is heavier than air. If it's released to the atmosphere, it will tend to settle in low places and be slow to disperse. We explained how hydrogen sulfide is detected with automatic monitors and Draeger detector tube testing. And we reviewed the emergency procedures for dealing with an H2S release. Your first action should always be to leave the area and sound an alarm. Then you put on an air-supplying respirator before attempting any rescue operations. Hydrogen sulfide. It's a hazard that demands your respect and attention. But like any hazard, the risks can be controlled and minimized. We hope you'll use the information in this program to help you work safely with hydrogen sulfide. Thank you for watching.